Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today we're going to be talking about riding with cars on the road. Now I hope this video will be helpful for anyone who either commutes through the city a lot or someone who would like to ride more places but they don't because they're afraid to get on the road with a bunch of cars and ride with traffic. And by the way, at the end of this video, someone watching is going to win a free electric bike. It's going to be the Propella 7S. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see how you could be the one to win that e-bike. Now I'm going to give you a bunch of tips I've learned over the years just from experience riding around myself, but these are not hard and fast rules. I'll often break some of these rules just when I need to for a specific case or just when it's inconvenient to follow them. But generally, these are going to be the important tips that are going to help most people. Also, just FYI, you are going to see me doing a lot of lane splitting like this in the video, riding very closely to cars that are both stopped and moving. This is part of the road culture here in Tel Aviv, and I've been doing it for so long that it's just second nature to me, which is why I realized when editing this video afterwards that I did not do a good enough job of explaining that you do not have to ride like this. If you are not comfortable getting this close to cars, then you can of course stay in the line of traffic or over time just slowly get more used to lane splitting if it is allowed in your area like it is here. I'm used to doing this on both my motorcycles and my bicycles and so it just doesn't feel odd to me but I do understand that this can look scary to some people and so you should not feel any pressure to ride like this just because you'll see me doing it here sometimes. All of the tips in this video are still valid even if you want to wait in the line of traffic instead of filtering through like this. And now the first tip, and this might sound a bit odd, but I'm gonna tell you not to ride with cars unless you have to. Stay out of the street, stay in the bike lane if you can. If you have protected bike lanes, use them. They are so much better than riding on the street like this. I'm in Tel Aviv here and we actually have pretty good bike lanes. I'm purposely looking for streets that don't have bike lanes yet so that I can demonstrate some of these tips. But in general, stay off the street and stay away from cars unless you have to mix it up with them. The next tip is to be visible. And this is a few things. One, it means wearing visible clothing if you can. I'm not doing a great example of that right now. I'm in my typical black tee, but if you can wear brighter colors, if you can be on a brighter bike, which I always like to be, that is a huge benefit to make you more visible. But also it's about being visible to cars in terms of your placement. So here I'm making sure that I'm behind this car. I'm not off to his corner and his blind spot. You can see me in two of his three mirrors right now. The car behind me, oh, that's a bus behind me can obviously see me. So it's about placing yourself where cars can see you when you're in traffic. At this point, I could slip through here and do a little lane splitting, but I know the light was just about to turn green, so I'm not gonna take that risk. Now I'm in a two lane road. I'm technically in the public transportation side of it, but I'm allowed to be here. And I'm not gonna scoot too far over. I don't want this bus to pass me too closely. If he wants to go around me, he can get in the other lane and pass me. I'm not gonna let him get too close to me by riding on the shoulder. To be clear, this is about owning your lane. As long as there are two traffic lanes here and you are not going dangerously slower than the speed of traffic, there is no reason a car should be trying to squeeze past you in your lane. They can simply get in the left lane if they want to pass. So don't be inviting cars to pass you in your lane by being squeezed over in the shoulder. Own your lane if you need to. That being said, I'm still in the right side of my lane so that motorcycles don't try and pass me on the right and so that a car doesn't try to squeeze in there as well. Now the next tip is to communicate effectively with drivers on the road. And the two best ways to do that are with eye contact and with hand signals. Now in this case, I need to make a left up here. I gotta cross like three lanes to do it. So I'm gonna be looking for when I have space and I'm also gonna use hand signals. And I got a truck back there, so I'm gonna make sure that I don't cross in front of his path. And here I see I've got a good amount of space after the truck, but that car is coming up relatively quickly, so I'm gonna signal, but I'm also already moving over enough to show the car that I'm not asking for permission here. I'm informing the driver of what I'm doing, but I'm not committing so far that I can't bail back to my lane if he's gonna be a jerk about it. All right, so I use my hand signals. That car slowed down. This motorcycle's letting me know he's coming as well. And that way everyone's talking to each other and everyone knows what everyone is doing. So here's another example of being visible. I've pulled way out in front of the cars here. I went right to the front of the line. Generally in Israel here, motorcycles and bikes always pull to the front of the line here because it makes us the most visible. When the light turns green, we can go ahead quickly and get out of the way and everyone sees that we're there. All right, now the lights turn green 
and I get to go first and I am out of the way into the right lane here and not causing problems for anybody and they're not causing problems for me. Now, another important consideration is that you should always try to follow traffic rules when you can. You can see I'm lane splitting here. This is totally fine. It is legal here in Israel, so I don't have to worry about that. In this case, now traffic's about to start moving again, so I'm gonna pull in between cars here, making myself visible again. So this van behind me knows I'm right here in front of them. But you always wanna follow traffic laws because you really wanna be predictable. You want cars to know what you're doing. If you're blowing through red lights, they're not expecting that. If you're blowing through stop signs, again, they're not expecting that. So you wanna ride predictably using the rules of the road. Now that doesn't mean that you always have to follow every traffic rule. In many places, there are rules set aside just for bikes, like the Idaho stop, which means that basically red lights are effectively stop signs, stop signs are effectively yield signs. But generally speaking, you wanna follow all traffic laws. All right, in this case, traffic is stopped, so I'm just gonna wiggle through here. And I don't really have to worry about getting hit because no one can literally move here because it's just gridlock traffic. But still, you wanna make sure that you're prepared for when the traffic starts moving so that someone doesn't move on top of you. I can still see the lights red, so I'm still just moving forward here, putting myself at the front of the line. This way I know everyone can see me right up here at the front and I'm not gonna have an issue. Getting seen is half the battle. Another trick is to be watching the other lights around you. So I know I have a red light, but I'm looking at the cross street here. They still have a green, but by watching their light, I'll be able to see when it turns yellow and I'll know that mine is about to turn green, so I'm prepared. There it is, theirs is turning yellow, and here's mine. You also wanna be courteous of other cyclists. Here's another cyclist, he's not on an e-bike, I'm going faster, but I'm gonna give him enough space so that he doesn't feel rushed. If you can call out on your left, that's always nice. Sometimes there's not enough time for it or it's just too loud, they're not gonna hear you anyways. But you always wanna make sure you give them enough space because hey, we're all in this together, right? All right, so here we have a bike lane that springs up out of nowhere and I'm gonna hop in the bike lane any chance I get. This is so much nicer. I know that I'm protected here from cars. I do have to watch out for pedestrians a little bit. This is another important point. Here we've got a crosswalk that crosses the bike path, so I gotta yield to all these folks. So you gotta be careful of that. Also, bikes pulling out into the bike lane like this, but this is still a much safer place to be. And see, it's great for everybody. And the bike lane ended. All right, so I'm heading back out into traffic. Gonna make sure I got space here. And I'm back into the right lane. Now the next tip is to just always be aware of what's going on around you. That means looking around 360 degrees. Do some shoulder checks. Make sure you know if there are motorcycles behind you, cars behind you, trucks. Know how fast they're going. But also not wearing earbuds all the time. I see so many people riding around with earbuds and you can't hear what's going on around you. When I was in the army, we weren't allowed to wear two earbuds. We had to have at least one of them out so you could hear what was going on around you. And to this day, that's still how I wear them. I don't want to be closed off from the world. It's important to me to hear what's going on around me and to be able to react to it. But being aware means more than just knowing where cars are around you. It also means knowing where your escape points are. So if I'm following behind a car, A, I'm not gonna follow too close, but B, I'm gonna be looking for areas around them that if they suddenly slam on the brakes, that I can fit into, that I can escape to. That's part of being aware, is knowing what's around you and where you can go. Another aspect of being aware is not getting doored. Getting doored is when you ride past usually a parked car, like a parallel parked car, and they open a door and that hits you or you go right into the side of it. Now the best way to avoid getting doored is to stay one door width away from any cars on the side of the road. So like here, I'm making sure I'm staying at least a door away from all of these cars. It's hard to try and look inside of them and see if someone's about to open the door. That's why these accidents are so dangerous. It's because it comes as such a surprise. Now, sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes you're squeezing between cars and there just isn't room to stay a door away. In that case, I just slow down so I'm not going as fast near them and I have more time to react if I start to see a door open. Oh. 
Next tip, let's talk about speed. Generally, you want to try and match the speed of traffic around you. If everyone's going 20, 25, and I'm doing 10, 15, then that's even more dangerous for me. It's better if I can keep up with traffic. That's why I'm of the school of thought that faster bikes are actually safer in a way, because they allow you to keep up with the speed of traffic and not get passed so often. So here, this is also technically allowed. I'm not going up all the way to the front of the um, intersection here. I went past the crosswalk, but I'm staying behind the uh, imaginary line of the intersection. So again, this puts me out in front of everybody. It's a way that I can be seen. Back to speed though. This is why I always prefer class three e-bikes when I can get them. Those are bikes that go up to 28 miles an hour or 45 kilometers per hour, because in my opinion, more speed gives you the option of going faster when you need to, just to be safer. Now, there are times like right now when I can move faster than the speed of traffic. Cars here are crawling along and I wanna go faster, so that's what I'm trying to do. But I try not to exceed the speed of traffic too much so that I can be prepared just in case something happens. And now once traffic is moving again, I'm back in the lane and I'm matching the speed of traffic here. The next tip here is to be predictable. That means don't weave around more than you need to. Don't go against the direction of traffic. Ride in a way that cars are going to be able to basically predict what you're going to do next. Whatever you're doing, try and continue doing that because that's what cars think you're gonna do. Now, you're not gonna be able to do this all the time. Sometimes you need to make a turn, but in that case, indicate that you're gonna make a turn. Don't suddenly swerve out of nowhere. Anything you can do to make yourself more predictable to cars means you're less likely to be surprised by the car. Next, you wanna look for actions that are gonna cause cars to make decisions. Like, just in front of us there, that van started moving around to get to the right and he almost squeezed that uh, motorcyclist out of the way. Now you could see that coming because it was obvious he was gonna try and squeeze past this uh, taxi here. If you're looking for those kind of cues, you can get an idea of what cars are gonna do before they even do them. One of the most common sort of danger situations that I see is when I'm on the right side, I'm up against the shoulder and I'm moving past slow moving cars and a motorcycle comes on the left side in between the two lanes of cars and they want to pass as well. What that does is when the car hears or sees the motorcycle coming, they'll squeeze to the right, maybe sometimes not seeing me there, and that'll create a dangerous situation where I could get squeezed off the side of the road. In that case, whenever I see a motorcycle is going to pass on the left side when I'm on the right, I always just slow down and let them go first so that they don't push the car into my path. Now in this case, when I'm lane splitting through an intersection, you got to be even more careful. See how all these cars are stacked on top of each other here? I'm making sure I'm not getting squeezed off the side of the road there because that's a very common danger situation. Ooh, look at this little mini car here. Oh, that is awesome. I love that thing. Look at that. Oh man, that made me so happy. If you have to have a car, have a tiny little car like that. Here, I gotta be real careful again. I'm in two lanes of traffic here on the right side. I wanna make sure I don't get squeezed into these bars here. So I'm looking for any cars that are gonna be moving to the right, potentially squeezing me. If I see something that could turn into that, I'm just gonna hang back and not make that pass. Here's another dangerous situation. We've got a van parked here. So everyone's sort of merging on top of each other. Again, you just gotta look out for these things in the distance so you can be prepared for them ahead of time. In case you guys are wondering, this is the oldest skyscraper in Tel Aviv, the first one ever built here. It's the uh, Shalom Tower, the Peace Tower. I don't know when it was built. I want to say like the 70s. I'll have to look that up and put it here. When it was built, it was the tallest building in the Middle East or Asia. But man, we've come a long way, haven't we? Last but not least, I want to talk about safety equipment. Now this one can get a bit controversial. I know there are a lot of opinions out there. Personally, what I usually wear is a helmet and that's just about it. I try to ride in pants and closed shoes as well most of the time. Just in case I go down, it's a little bit better for you. But generally speaking, I just wear a helmet and that's it. Some people don't like to wear a helmet at all. I know when I was in uh, the Netherlands, no one wore a helmet. For some reason, the Danish like to wear these like inflatable helmet necklace things that sit around your neck and then they uh, apparently inflate when you get into an accident. I'm not a big fan of those just because it seems like they only really work when uh, you're in an accident where the first thing you hit is the ground from flying off your bike. I've seen some videos where they seem to work pretty well there and then I've also seen videos where if you hit a car or something on the way down they don't really work that well.
Some people like to wear elbow pads, knee pads, the whole nine yards, and that's great too. Whatever works for you. That's really a personal choice, but for me, I think uh, a helmet is the bare minimum of safety gear. You know, a, a skinned elbow or knee will heal, a broken bone will heal, a brain injury will not heal. So that's just sort of my thoughts on that. All right, here's another tricky section. There's a bus blocking traffic here. So everyone's gonna be kind of squeezing in here. Just another case where you gotta be careful, sort of, you know, take your turn, look where all the cars are. Nice thing is if you can go through with other bikes like this, then uh, you kind of have strength in numbers. You're more visible and cars will generally let a group of bikes go through. But especially when you're by yourself, those situations, you just gotta be extra careful. Here's a bonus tip. I'm behind this big dump truck right now that's throwing up a bunch of dust. One thing I like to do when I'm in a really dusty area and I don't have eye protection on is go ahead and close one eye. It might sound funny, but I'll just ride like this. Sometimes that dust gets in your eye and your reaction is to immediately just shut your eyes. So if that does happen to me, I'll just shut that eye and suddenly I have one more eye left to be able to look while I get the uh, watering eye effect out. Doesn't happen that often, but it's a nice little trick if you know you're about to go through a big cloud of dust or something. All right, so those are all the tips I wanted to uh, share with you guys today. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm going to be giving away a free e-bike. This time it is the Propella 7S. This is a really cool e-bike. Let me see if I can squeeze into the beach uh, bike lane here real quick. All right, now the Propella 7S. This is an awesome electric bike. It is great for riding around the city, just like I'm doing now. That's basically what it's designed for. It's a real lightweight urban bike, you know, under 40 pounds, real easy to pick up. It's got a uh, 350 watt motor. I think it peaks a bit higher though. It doesn't have a throttle, it's just pedal assist. But like you've seen today, I've been doing a mix of throttle riding and pedal assist riding. And if you're in a city, I actually really like pedal assist just because it gives me a chance to get a little more exercise. It gives me a little more foot control of the bike. And I think it adds to the experience. I also love just how efficient the Propella 7S is. It is so easy to pedal because it just, it doesn't weigh much, there's not much to it. It's a very streamlined, simple e-bike. So it's just so efficient when you're pedaling it around. It doesn't have a massive battery or anything, but that battery will last and last. That's what you get with those very efficient bikes that don't try to have too much power. They just make it so it's a nice, comfortable amount to get you around the city. All right, now how's this giveaway going to work? It's part of the program I started called E-Bikes for Good, where at the end of every one of my videos, I give away a free electric bike. A huge thank you to Propella for making this one possible. Now, if you are someone who can't afford an electric bike, but an e-bike would make a huge difference in your life, helping you get around, helping you get fit, just doing something for you to give you that extra mobility that you're lacking, then please head on over to ebike school slash ebikes for good. I'll put the URL down here. You can enter the uh, entry form there. Let me know what your situation is, how an e-bike would help improve your life in any way, shape, or form. Among the deserving entrants, I will do a random drawing, which will be announced at the end of my next video. If you want to be the one to win that propella, then all you got to do is go to ebikeschool.com slash ebikes for good, enter the form, and hopefully it can be you. And now for my favorite part of these videos, it is time to announce the winner of the free e-bike from my last video. And the randomly selected deserving entrant that's going to win that free e-bike is... Eric E. Eric, you sound like a great guy. I know you're down on your luck. You're disabled. Your pedal bike was stolen that you normally ride around on to not use a car. And I am excited that we're going to be able to get you a new e-bike to replace it and get you back out on your feet and riding around again. Now for the final last but not least, it is time to announce the winner of the book giveaway from my last video. And the randomly selected commenter that'll win a free copy of one of my books is... Lumon. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. Anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you gotta do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And anybody who doesn't wanna wait that long to hopefully win a free copy of one of my books, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. See you here next time.